year at the World Economic Forum. Um, it's wonderful to see uh, so many old faces, new faces as well. On behalf, uh, I'm Zarar Segal, on behalf of myself and Ikram Segal, I welcome you. Uh, before I get into introductions about our esteemed guests, I just wanted to say a little bit about VRG and digital financial inclusion. Pakistan has a national strategy of financial inclusion, which is designed to get the unbanked into the system. Part of that program, Pathfinder Group has developed a switch or a, a program, a SAR mobile account, which was designed not just to further the strategy, but, but to augment it. And this, I'm very proud to say, was designed created, and is now being implemented as a homegrown domestic Pakistan product. And I think one should be very proud as Pakistanis that this was created in Pakistan by IPATH, VRG, all of those people are here today. And, you know, I'm, it's, it's with great pride I welcome them as well uh, to this forum. As part, of, as part of sort of bringing VRG and the Assam Mobile account to other countries of the world, we have now partnered up with our great friends at the World Economic Forum, particularly the Edison Alliance. And I welcome Claude Dyer, who's the acting head of the Edison Alliance. That's uh, the title. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll give you head of Edison Alliance. How's that? Claude is obviously a good friend of both uh, VRG and Pathfinder. Um, he was the first one to bring quantum computing to the World Economic Forum and was part of that program. And now has really led the push to get the underserved or the underprivileged into uh, the financial network. And so, Claude, I turn to you first. Mr. Sigal, Ali, uh, Salman, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, as our, uh, you were saying, I work with the World Economic Forum and I lead the Edison Alliance which is the forum's flagship initiative on digital inclusion, which we launched um, three years ago. You might be aware that one third of the world population does not have access to the internet today. So we've um, gathered a pretty large community of 160, 180 partners, uh, really around a common goal to see how we could collectively um, bridge the digital divide. And I see Mats from GSMA, who is one of our champions, which is a group of very, very senior leaders and CEOs and ministers, heads of UN organizations um, that are really providing guidance and leadership um, on that. So we are addressing the main barriers to universal digital inclusion, which are, of course, access to connectivity, the lack of the necessary digital infrastructure, but also affordability um, of devices, affordability of data plans, and what we call usability, which is the lack of necessary um, digital skills. But the kind of the vision behind the Edison Alliance is um, in 2021, when we launched it exactly three years ago, was really at the height of the COVID pandemic. And we realized that basic life services that all of us here take for granted, banking, health, education, were moving online at a very rapid pace, exacerbating existing inequalities. Think of a teenager living in a remote area, maybe with access to broadband, maybe that teenager is still able to go to school physically. Now with closed pandemic, it's a double money where it's doubly um, excluded and so that person's future is jeopardized because all of a sudden they don't have access to, to basic education. So that was really our, our idea to kind of expand our definition of digital inclusion to see how we could provide affordable and accessible digital solutions to underserved populations around the world. Um, so there's rapidly three things that, that we're doing. The first is we tried to, well, we gathered this community around a common goal, the One Billion Life Challenge. The idea was to set a very, um, ambitious but simple challenge to see how we could provide these services to 1 billion people around the world by 2025. And we announced um, two days ago now um, in a press release and several press conferences and, and events that um, our partners have um, reached 784 million lives uh, so far across 320 initiatives and in uh, 127 countries. So that's really great progress that we're very excited about. But what's even more interesting is Thanks to this kind of reporting, we mapped out 300 initiatives, and now we're making connections between partners to see if we kind of scale those and um, have a bit more of an ecosystem play. Because there's no lack of effort, we're seeing that. There are many initiatives tackling these different issues, but there's a lack of collaboration. So we're trying to be a catalyst and provide a platform for partners to kind of come together. And we're seeing a number of partnerships emerge already from, from the Edison Alliance. The last thing is around, I would say, um, facilitating um, best practice sharing and peer learning. We have a platform for 
that we call the Lighthouse Countries Network. Uh, we have 11 countries that have joined us, um, five have joined us um, two days ago. And the idea is really for ministers of ICT to exchange on digital inclusion solutions that they're testing that might be replicable um, across uh, geographies. And the second is really to help them also crowd in private sector resources so they can advance their own digital inclusion agendas. So that's kind of our mission. Um, we're very proud to have VRG and the Pathfinder Group uh, part of part of this um, this great coalition. And I would like to commend you on, on reaching 10 million uh, bank accounts um, open through the Azan Mobile Scheme. We've participated, uh, collaborated quite a bit. Um, we ran a spotlight day uh, where we invited the entire Edison community to learn more um, because what we want is to also amplify great solutions that are that are being deployed and that are successful uh, that so that hopefully other partners can replicate them across um, geographies. We've produced several social media videos. I think you're showcasing the as a yes. mobile scheme on our initiatives marketplace and our navigator, which has a thousand pieces of content today. So we're, we're really looking forward to, to continuing this this um, great collaboration. Um, and I think what's really interesting mm -hmm. to me is to see, you know, the talk of the town this year is AI. Right, and how new technology is already transforming our lives. And you mentioned I worked on quantum, and quantum will be the next step eventually. We, do, we don't know when. Um, but what you're doing is actually you're using technology that exists today, very practically, in a very innovative way, to provide solutions to people that don't have access to these basic needs um, like banking. And so I think that's very commendable um, and a great way to show that actually with existing technology, there's so much that can be done. Um, so I'll, I'll end there. I know we also have a video, so I don't. Um, happy to play that video later, or or. ਬਿਲਕੁਲ <laughs> कि मैं बैंकों में जाऊं और लंबी लाइनों में खड़ी हूं उसने कहा नहीं इसकी आपको जरूरत नहीं आप तो आसान अकाउंट आ गया है वो आपको घर बैठे सारी सहूलत दे रहे बहुत आसान हो गया अब तो मेरे लिए पहले मुझे सोचना पड़ता था मैं पोलर बंद करूंगी घर से बाहर जाऊंगी अब मुझे ये सब कुछ नहीं करना पड़ता अब इजीली सारे काम मेरे हो जा जी मुझे भी बहुत फायदे हैं इसके लिए मुझे भी बैंक वगैरह में मुश्किल होती थी जाने के लिए और व्हीलचेयर मतलब कभी नहीं होती थी तो नीचे चल के जाना पड़ता था तो वो फिर काफी मुश्किलात का सामना है तो इस वजह से फिर मैं आराम से मोबाइल से यूज कर सकता हूं मैं डेटा ऑपरेटर हूं तो मैं अपनी फैमिली को पैसे लेता था उनको मुश्किल होती थी बैंक वगैरह जाने के लिए Thank you, Claude, and obviously thank you for Edison Alliance's support. Uh, you know, what you're doing obviously with us, but what you're doing the world over is critical. I think the idea to bring the unbanked to the net, you know, and really empower women as well, and, you know, to bring bring sort of people who have been outside of the banking system into the net remains a critical goal. And I think your quantum computing background will help you, you know, for the future from what I've heard at the WEF. I think, I think you'll have the skills necessary. Well, I think lawyers like me will be obsolete soon. So, you know, AI and quantum computing will take over soon. But thank you. Thank you again. Thank you.
I, I'd like to introduce our friends at Jazz next. Uh, you know, we've had a very fruitful collaboration over the years, and I would say more than fruitful. I think Jazz, you know, remained one of the first companies that supported us at the VRG and supported the Assam Mobile Account Scheme. They could have looked at us as competitors, and I'm sure some people in their own institution looked at us as competitors and certainly the telecom community. But Jazz has just done an unbelievable, and you know, outside of our collaboration, it's been unbelievable, you know, in Pakistan. It's the largest telecom provider in Pakistan, 60 million subscribers. Is that over 60 70. Million, 70 million subscribers? So my, my data is already old. So <laughs> 70, over 70 million subscribers. Uh, Jazz Cash, for people who are familiar with the digital wallet scheme, remains the most popular way of transferring money, you know, as a digital wallet scheme. And with that, I invite Amir to speak. Say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Zarar. And, uh, you know, like, let me get the customary but very heartfelt uh, words of appreciation to you, uh, Ikram Saab. And uh, also thank uh, all the guests uh, who are joining us, Matt, uh, Dr. Saab, Janzeb Saab. Uh, familiar faces, I think I'll be preaching uh, to the converted, but I think it's an important story that must be told. Uh, last year, the term uh, poly crisis got coined over here from COVID to conflict to climate. And I think given the events uh, of the last two days, especially for Pakistan, the cross-border incursions, uh, I think we are in a state of, uh, you know, Burma crisis. Uh, we just have to recognize these kind of crises as a new normal. Uh, just the word new normal was coined at the time of uh, COVID. I think the world is going through a new normal where conflict and, uh, you know, black swan events will always be there. So we have to somehow factor those in. Pakistan, unfortunately, was negatively affected through the uh, poly crisis a year ago. We lost 30,000 precious lives, although we did remarkably well in COVID. Uh, the conflict resulted in 30% inflation, 30% devaluation of the currency. Then we had climate, the biblical floods of 2022. We can't forget that one third of the population was affected, 15 million displaced, about $30 billion, a huge amount for a Pakistani economy. So in you know, when you look at this thing, it's difficult to get energized about the future, but we must. As leaders, we are dealers in hope, and we have to promise the world in our next generations a better world. And the question comes in, can digital do something for us? And of course it can, and it has, and it will continue to. And the stories, the inspirational stories that we just uh, saw is just a testament on what technology can do to uplift the people and bring communities together. So we want to move away from the three C's from last year through the to the T, three T's, I would say, uh, the theme of this year is rebuilding trust. And, uh, you know, technology could be a great facilitator in building that trust. And the last component of that is going to be transparency. So technology, trust, and transparency, I think, should be the new mantra. How does jazz fit into this thing? I, you know, I want to spend a little bit more time on that. You can't build trust if your population is not included. So the whole concept of AMA, Jazz Cash, digital financial inclusion is really to bring the populace into the discussion table. And what we have in our hands today is the remote control to our lives. It's one of the best equalizers that we have seen, the world has ever seen. It reduces the gap between the poor and the rich, uh, between the urban and the rural, between uh, one economy somewhere in the Western Hemisphere to another one which is lesser developed in the Southern Hemisphere. But it has to be intentional. It wouldn't automatically happen. And we at Jazz have been at the forefront of making sure that we bridge these gaps. Uh, 30 years ago, when we started our company, uh, a lot of you probably know us as Mobile Link. We're a company that used to build towers and sell SIMs, and we will continue to do that. But our license does not define our identity. The evolving customer needs is where we need to go. The market opportunities is what will gravitate us towards those opportunities. So we want to be considered ourselves as a consumer company with a telecom license or a banking license. But let's uh, pivot a little bit more towards financial services because that's something that I'm truly passionately uh, involved in and believe in. And uh, I think part of the segment that you mentioned was really on women. You know, like every organization I think must have a purpose. And we've been trying to define that purpose for ourselves. And you're like, whether you call it a CSR initiative, or you call it something else, but we've really gone through what is our purpose? Why does jazz exist? And you know, we then figured it out. It is to help improve the lives and livelihoods of women through technology. 
And the byproduct of that, the returns to the shareholders, is a consequence of what we do. And we have to really commit ourselves to that. In a country, you know, like uh, the World Economic Forum, if you look at the gender gap report, Pakistan is an unenviable uh, slot, 142 out of 146 countries. That's not where I want us to be. And what can the mobile phone do for us? We can provide them with the world of opportunities, starting from education. 27 million kids still out of school. That's almost about 50% of the youth population in that segment. We would do not have enough time. We do not have enough bricks to put all of them through traditional schools. Again, a smartphone or a tablet with an internet connection is a solution. Our ambition is to put a smartphone in every hand and a broadband connection in every home. And that is a responsibility. When we say that, you know, Jazz is the leading operator or Jazz is this big, that leadership comes with responsibility. It is not just for, uh, you know, putting headlines in the newspaper and gloat about, you know, what we have achieved. Leadership is always about responsibilities. And we have a responsibility to the country to make sure that the access to internet, to broadband, is universal. If I were, I would probably redo the SDGs and say broadband must be a universal right, just like education, clean water. But indirectly, we're still supporting seven out of those goals. So we are at the base of a number of initiatives. Telecom is no longer a sector, but a cross-sector enabler. So it helps every single sector and sectors which are important for us. Banking or finance will become fintech. Agriculture will become agri-tech. Education becomes edge-tech. Let's go back to the fintech component of it. Pakistan, um, again, has a huge opportunity. More than 75% of our adult population does not have access to a formal banking relationship. Um, we have not really expanded our banking footprint in the country. Yet, at the same time, almost every person, every second person, has a mobile phone. A lot of them feature phones, and then about 50% of them smartphones. So we realize that if we have to actually become relevant in customers' daily lives, we have to make sure that we can provide to them a banking or a financial solution through their smartphones. And that's the birth of Jazz Cash. Today, Jazz Cash and its parent bank, MobileLink Microfinance Bank, have a total of 44 million accounts. And I don't want to get into numbers because it's not just a competitive thing, but this number is larger than all the banks combined together in Pakistan. So where the banks have failed, the telecom companies have cashed in on that opportunity to provide banking, payments, and all the services related to financial institutions through smartphones and through feature phones. More than 16 million customers use Jazz Cash on a monthly basis. Seven million transactions are processed every single day. We issue close to 100,000 loans every day to the tune of 25 to $40. So that's the power and the reach of this thing. And we made a commitment that we have to get to a parity when it comes to women inclusion. I'm proud to say that 30% of our borrowers and account holders are women now at Jazz Cash. And I'm not happy with that number because it really has to be close to half and half. So there's a lot more work to be done, but this is not where we're stopping. We have to work on digital literacy. We have to get rid of social barriers. We have to get rid of the cultural barriers. And sometimes those barriers are not going to be easily um, addressed just by talking about them. We have a dedicated team of people that actually go into what is called an outreach program, and we have to work with the communities. And we're learning from people like uh, Dr. Saab over here on uh, the remarkable things that he has done. So we're humble about you know, what we can do. We have to build, borrow, and buy. But we are also very humble in terms of learning. We learn from AMA. And when Ikram Saab actually said that, listen, I've got this idea, I think he was knocking on various doors in terms of can we use the feature phone connectivity to bring your customers onto our account. And since we already had Jazz Cash, the initial thing was, well, it's going to be a competitor. And I was like, no, my competition is not Arma. My competition is all those people who are relying on cash. My competition is people who are not yet educated. It's not always another digital bank. It's not always a traditional bank. It's not uh, a, a different kind of player. Our competition really has to be the opportunity in the country and the responsibility that we must bear to address that opportunity. 
So I welcomed that thing, and I know that uh, Profit Magazine um, did an article, and they were really curious, like, what's your angle? Why are you supporting their competitor? I was like, we have to build the ecosystem. And the greater number of people who talk about it, that there has to be something done for financial inclusion, the better it is for me. So in a way, you helped me. I wasn't really helping you because you were advocating for inclusion at the central bank. I was doing the same thing at the telecom authority. And together, we are able to create 10 million customers who are using their feature phone to get connected to their traditional banks. Now, that wouldn't have happened if we had taken a scarcity approach. We have to shift gears. And part of the thing about rebuilding trust is you're like, how do we collaborate more often? How do we have respectful, open, transparent dialogues that allow us to go past that win-lose mindset into what can we collectively create? So grateful for that uh, call that you made to me, and I'm very proud, uh, if I can say so, of the achievements that you've done, and we're going to be a cheerleader. And if tomorrow you are more successful than Jazz Cash, so be it. All the more power to you. But our competition, like I said, is the opportunity and the responsibility. It is not really one-upping somebody else who traditionally is looked upon as a competitor. This is exciting, uh, troubling times. Uh, there's a lot more to be done. I'm certainly very excited about what lies ahead, despite all the challenges that we are aware of and that we become more aware of every single day. I thank all of you to be uh, co-participants in this exciting journey ahead, and I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. And, you know, obviously, as I stated before, we are very proud of our collaboration with you, and, you know, we hope it multiplies in the future. Uh, but it is interesting. I've heard a lot about fears about artificial intelligence, about how humans will be replaced by machines. But I think it's just the human brain fails to comprehend, as you said. The mobile phone that's in my hand, which is an extension of my hand, can do more than 60 computers or 100 computers with 3,000 people could do. With that, what I can do with my phone now, you know, I can, I can move cash, I can search the net, I can print, you know. So I, I think it's just the human brain doesn't, can't comprehend that. If the concern is that human beings are becoming into machines, that's already happened with the, with the advent of the mobile phone. So really the fear should be something different as to you know, how we regulate, how we, how we manage that. But thank you again. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Mama Salwan, our you know, CEO of VRG and one of the principal architects of the Assad mobile accounts team with, uh, you know, I know Alicia is sitting back there with iPod, but between the two of them, they've been the principal architects. So I welcome you, Salman. So good morning, everyone. Indeed, like poly crisis, climate change issues, we have been suffering with this. And we are keep suffering from all the other aspects which are right now coming in. But we need to realize one thing. We need to realize one thing, that Pakistan, and what is the potential in Pakistan? So some basics around a population of 230 million with the youth of 60 percent. So we are really talking about 130 million people youth. The gold mine in Pakistan, I consider it is a gold mine. Concerning a 196.4 million subscribers of telecom operators, <coughs> means these are the potential clients, the people who have an outreach. Out of which 46 percent are the smartphone users and 44 percent are still the feature phone users. In and all those masses, and especially those youth, are actually using those features. So the opportunity lies there. I totally, I totally agree with Ahmed. Like, the real competition is cash. The real competition is financial literacy. The real competition is, like, how to get the people on board on the financial services. But one, we need to realize that those are the people who are very much tech-savvy with respect to the mobile wallets operating because of the people like Jazz Cash. Go the people like jazz. Those are the pioneers who actually created these rails and make them people educated that how to use these services. But again, the issue is they are not reachable or the services which they are actually using is not interoperable. For example, if I'm using a SIM of A operator and want to open a bank account in B bank, which is not a telco led bank, that is not possible. So these issues were there, and because of that, from, from year 20, 2000 till 20, 2016, we have been suffering from financial inclusion number. So from 5% to 7% to 8% then to 12%, but, we, but we, are not, we are not going anywhere. So we need to have a sort of solution, a sort of regulations first, 
where the interoperability among the telecom operators and the banks need to be increased. So this is the first step. And then second step comes in, how to get it implemented. Because every telecom and a telecom land debt banks or a commercial bank or retail banks have their own philosophy of operating in public. They are not safe. The good part is the national financial inclusion strategy has been introduced in Pakistan in 2019. So that is something which actually made people, okay, this is the pathway and we have to follow these potentials. But in 2017, in fact, the TPSP regulations, the third party service provider regulation has been introduced in Pakistan. VRG has been called to participate in that. And right now we are the only entity in Pakistan who have this commercial license of third party service provider. So by virtue of this, all the telecom operators right now are interoperable. Their services, their USSD service is interoperable with us. Now the issue is, we need to have a sort of scheme. As Amir said, we need to have an ecosystem first. So for the ecosystem, first you need to have a certain scheme, a platform where every mobile user, either from the smartphone or for the future phone, interact with the bank. And the bank is of its own choice. It's not like any A bank or a B bank. So that front platform will be, need to be have there. So iPad and VRG all together made this platform. As we speak, this platform is being called as Amani platform. And the first scheme, which has been introduced by the World Bank, State Bank, PTA, is the Asan mobile account scheme. And that scheme is actually enabling all those masses who are using feature phones and by dialing just a short code from any telecom operator, you can access the banking services. You can open a bank account in less than two minutes without producing any sort of document. All the email, KYCs and everything is automated. It's been verified online real time and the account has been opened directly. So think about those people who are working in remote areas. Let me give you an example. Right now, the army personnel who are deployed on the Gilbi Baltistan borders and on their mountains, they are using feature phones. They cannot use smartphones. It's this regulation, it's not the, the, uh, the order from the, they, they cannot use smartphones. So how they can get their salaries? They all have AMA accounts. The salary will be directly disbursed into their accounts while standing over there. They're using their feature phones, transfer the money to their loved ones, and get all the balances and all the financial services, bill payments that have been done, just in a GIF. It's the biggest use case. The people who are using these services, like the workers, like the people who are the cobbler. In fact, I, I met a person in Cham at near, near the Chaman border because I just went there and get the, to know that how this service works in, in those remote areas. So a cobbler is using that service now and transferring the money and getting them also the getting money into their accounts. So no need to have the physical cash in place. So this is, this is the inclusion which we are actually aiming at. As a VRG, as a Pathfinder Group company and the vision of the Pathfinder is, is purely towards financial inclusion and government power. And for that, we are committed. We have been recognized for this solution. We have been recognized in 2022 by Quinn Maxima in her speech. If someone wants to see the poor poor system in Pakistan, just go and see in Pakistan. We have been recognized by the World Economic Forum, thanks to Claude Dyer and all the other people and the team, that this platform is being now considered as the, those platforms which is being, can be easily be replicated in other parts of the development countries. Not only this, we have been offered by the Spotlight Day, as a VRG Spotlight Day, and where we have actually expressed this whole solution to the world. But this is just the beginning. We are aiming towards not only 10 million accounts or 20 million accounts or 30 million accounts. We want to enrich this service with multiple services. Right now, it's just the financial service. This year's aim is to include the health service into this platform. So any person, maybe living in any remote area, can directly acquire the health services or the insurance services by using the feature phone, not only the smartphone. This is the objective. We have already collaborated with different service providers, different insurance companies providers, and we'll be launching this service in next quarter. So aim is make this platform as a single window platform for all those masses 
who wants financial services, health services, and later on, education services. Seamless payments in Pakistan is very much possible now. We were facing challenges from the state bank, from the different service providers. But now, with the introduction of RAST by the state bank, who is directly integrated with VRG, let me tell you that out of these 10 million accounts and the transactions, I think it's 90.2 million, 99.2 million transactions, most of those transactions have been processed by the RAST seamlessly. There is no other scheme in Pakistan who is directly integrated with all the banks on a single scheme, integrated into a single scheme and get it from the state bank. Our objective, finally, is not to work only towards tapping those, those people who are living in the rural areas and have feature phones. Because internet penetration is getting very high. Army is working very hard with the ministry for, for the you know, low-end telephone services and internet services as well. So we have planned to launch our Asan mobile account application, mobile application as well. It's been, inshallah, it's been inaugurated in the next month by the, by the state bank governor. So now we are also moving towards in the area where people are using mobile phones, but also require, wants to acquire the financial services, so they can use the app as well. Let me just give you a very quick brief that what Asan mobile account is, how it is operating, and what are our future collaborations. Because our objective in Pakistan is also to automate all the all those government entities where the people are interacting in a mass level. So let me give you a very quick brief on this. Yes. Asan mobile account scheme. Uh, this scheme is having a very basic transactions going on, but these transactions are the main transactions which have been operated by many of the masses. Right? So you can open a bank account. You have a mini statement. You have a change pane, balance inquiry, send money bill payments, but the beauty is account linking. If you ha already have a bank account, if you want to link your bank account on this platform, you can directly link your bank account. Let me tell you that out of 10, 10 million accounts, nearly 30% accounts are the link accounts. So that shows the success of this platform, that people are already having a bank account, but they want to use this platform, they have linked their account on this platform. So this is something really interesting. Next one, please. A very common model just to show you that everywhere, all the telecom operators, all the banks. This is the many-to-many -many model, the first time introduced in Asia by VRG and IPA. Right now, in Pakistan, we have this model as a one-to-one -one model available. But with the partners like Jazz, with the partners like other three people, but the, the road the road rails has been created by, by Jazz for this. But now, we have the many-to-many -many model, and the same any bank, any sort of services. And now banks are learning this model. And what they are saying is that what are the tools are the propriety and the unique services which we have, we want to implement all these services on this platform. So those services will be available to the other people as well as a cross inter interoperable platform. So this is something we are very, very much uh, looking forward. We are looking forward to enhance the services and their IT infrastructure as well. Let me tell you one thing uh, before I forgot. We are the only company in Pakistan who have the PSO, PSP, and the TPSP license, the two licenses. This is our USP. But no, the third USP is we are the only company in Pakistan who has the PSO, PSP license, TPSP license, and a cloud service, cloud license for operating end to end operations on cloud. The first time in Pakistan, and I'm proudly said that cloud, cloud service provider is Garage. Powered by Jazz. So, four telecom operators, 17 banks, 10 million customers are running on cloud service of Karach. So this is the this is the amazing thing which we have done in Pakistan. The next one, please. A very quick stats: 10.1 million accounts. But if you can see, you can see Balochistan and KPK, those areas where women are not allowed to operate, not allowed to go outside. They are not allowed to hold money in their hands. Let me tell you that out of these 10 million accounts, 38 million, 38 percent accounts are women accounts. The first time in the history of Pakistan, never been done before. So this is something which this platform is actually in women empowerment. 
we can also tell you that look, that 90 million accounts, 87 billion PKR worth of financial transactions. But the major thing is, if you'll see that KPK in Balochistan and Fatai regions, where this service is more impact. We are working with many other government uh, entities, many other work, many other government entities. But the outreach is again an issue. And this issue is not, not, not related to the technology. It's about you know, physically going over there and make the people learn this thing and the financial literacy problems. But we are working with the government organizations. I'm very proudly said that I'm working with government organizations like SCO, Special Communication Organization, to roll out this service in the Rajamir Kashmir and Uzbekistan. Very soon, we are just going to launch this service. But national savings. The biggest, uh, I must say, one of the oldest Nabri in Pakistan as a government entity who issued digital certificates and digital bonds. So now a person can buy digital bonds, certificates, redeem them, get their profits by using their future funds. By using their future funds. 3.8 million active customers they have and trillions of books. But still, they are facing the same challenge. For profit disbursements, for any acquiring of any new, new certificate, they have to come to their offices. They have a long queue of people waiting there at the end of the month when the profit gets dispersed and they are going to get, get it collected in the form of cash. So we are automating that right now. If you're talking about Utility Store Corporation, Shaki Saab is here as a GM uh, uh, Utility Store Corporation. And we are automating the payment schemes where a person can come over got their groceries and then pay through a Sun mobile account directly. So this is right now in the POC has been done. So we are about to go live very soon. 200,000 people's unique people visits utility store corporation on a daily basis. Again, it's a government organization. We are working very closely. There is Rakhi Aati Bank, the biggest agriculture bank in Pakistan. Again, the same problem for agri loans. For agri services, they have the app, but again, those farmers don't have the don't have this internet available, or maybe don't have the smartphones available. So all those services now are going to be on the future phone by using the Asan mobile accounts. This project we have recently concluded. Recently we have done the on the RFP as well. Bank of Fiber is the same bank, just like a government bank, but the good part is that they have the very very deep penetration in KPI. The whole KPK, 78% of the KPK is being, you know, the, the financial transaction is being, you know, moderated by Bank of Heaven. They are onboarded. And again, it's a government bank. The good part is by the increase of armor and by the increase of women transactions in KPK, this encourages Bank of Heaven to introduce this service. So again, thanks to armor scheme and their participants who have to make this possible. I came later on visa. The last is the very bigger program, the one of the biggest program in the world. That is due to be program of Nina's Indian support program. The chairman of Nina's Indian support program, sir, is here. He's very kind that he gave us time and to present the solution that the beneficiaries and all the women beneficiaries. And if I'm not wrong, sir, 90 million, sir? 9.3 million. 9.3 million beneficiaries and all are women of Bainas Income Support Programs is right now, we are having a word with them. We already have demonstrated that how those women, by using those feature phones, can get the all the disbursements on a monthly level. They can also have all the access of their his transaction histories. And not only this, for their registration process and also for the authentication of the service, because sometimes, because the woman is not literate. So the cash provider or the agents who are giving the money, they might be, you know, just bluff them. So for every transaction, they have to have the validation on their phones, but again on the future phones. Because those have those people who only have the future phones. So this is the program we are working with them and we are very, very much sure that we'll be going to automate this process on the you know, future phones. Last but not the least, Visa. So first time uh, as a strategic partner, VRG has become the strategic partner of Visa. In Pakistan. But what is the strategic level? Because there are three main pillars. The first one, financial inclusion. 
for any program for financial inclusion program visa is with us and they want to know not only to invest but also educate people with the financial literacy program the second one is very interesting that most of the government organizations and i'm, I'm just missing nadra people here that nadra is a very big organization people go and pay with it unfortunately they accept only cash no digital payments so for that opportunity and because we are also moving our paradigm towards another as a, another pillar as a to go into the tap and pay services so we are introducing the tap and pay services in the nadra uh, e solar centers and also on the different organizations but if it this is something which only for the government entities and for that nadra like visa has given us a very high level discount but this again going to be for the government organizations so we are working very closely with the government organizations because my perspective personally is that if the government organizations get digital where the people interact that will create a much more bigger impact as compared to the other service or other service providers because everybody in pakistan need any sort of government service to get the things done so this is my whole objective so guys this is this is something which rg is focusing on the pathfinder group is focusing on our objective our investments in our commitment last word is pakistan has a huge potential in spite of all these crises the stories of everything which is been right now going on maybe in the in the past or maybe in the future is is going to come up pakistan is always have the bright future we always have a habit of bounce back even if the political situation it is the financial situation or even if it is a matter of cricket as well so we always bounce back but remember one thing that this youth this gold mine is never be is never is never there in asia people can invest in pakistan we are now replicating this model to other developing countries but with the flagship out there this is a pakistani product in morocco in egypt in sudan i i would like to thanks again amir all the audiences sir this is proposition all the respected audience that please understand that pakistan is a country where you need to invest pakistan is the country where all the things can happen but at the end of the day the results are positive you can see jaska you can see vrg you can see any other companies potential lies with the youth potential lies with the operators potential lies with the services which is being and, and all the pol flexible policy by the state bank of pakistan and now the telecom operator and the pd as well so the atmosphere is very good i would like to say at the end i would like to say that this country pakistan is having something very unique which is never been i have seen in any part of the world thank you very much thank you thank you so much that was excellent and obviously uh I was going to ask you a few questions as well, but I'd like to give the floor to Alicia, CEO of iPath, that I mentioned about you, Ali. Maybe you can say a few words. So, um, to introduce myself, I've been the light guy, the sound guy for a few days. But my name is Ali. I uh, lead a wonderful team of engineers in Pakistan uh, in a company called iPath, and a member of the Pathfinder Group of companies. Um, and we work very closely with uh, VRG uh, to build the Asan mobile account platform. um i think i'll take a minute to actually appreciate uh, uh the efforts and the support that we received from jazz because uh being the chief architect on the on the on the project and sitting between two regulators trying to fuse together two different industries one talking about carriers and channels and the other talking about transactions uh it was a uh, it was a huge challenge and specifically when you're walking into and you know at that time back in the days we actually had very good experience in as far as banking is concerned but when it came to telecoms we were just you know trying to rub, brush up the surface to try to understand how this industry works and uh, walked into a lot of rooms uh, a lot of people told us uh, your competition were not interested but then you know there was one room that we walked into and they said no we see an opportunity over here and that was jazz and just because of jazz the first integration that we made with jazz that actually was a trickle down effect and the entire telecom industry then started integrating that one step made us it was such a giant leap for us that you know that actually gave us the entire telecom industry and then the, the telecom regulator was also 
well, also we're already was already supportive, but then you know we had a we had a model to actually present to all of them. Um, for Ama, I'd say uh, the example is somewhere in the 60s, Motorola actually invented the first telephone. But there was some Pakistani sitting there in the 90s who invented the most ubiquitous signaling model, which is called the miss call. <laughs> I'll give you a miss call to try to understand, come out. Call him over in Pakistan, I'll give you a miss call and come out. And I think this is something, this is something as uh, what we're seeing right now is basically the beginning of how AMA is going to be used in the future. Because a lot of a lot of people are going to come up with their own use cases. Uh, there is going to be a lot of frugal inventions. Banks are coming up. Um, a lot of G2P institutions are coming up uh, who are actually discussing different cases, how we can build around them. We're already talking uh, payment to merchants with, U with USC. We're talking uh, a, a, a very uh, extraordinary uh, and very transparent disbursement, uh, disbursement model with, uh, with BISP and so on and so forth. Um, but the mandate that we've said, and I think you know, to speak about the, the far strategic vision is basically when we started doing our Sama mobile account was basically a devil's triangle. So, you know, you had the banks, you had the telecoms, and we had some, we, and we were the third party sitting somewhere in the middle trying to find our way. But once we actually built Nama, we actually revised it. And from being a devil's triangle, it's basically a three phase approach for us. So, one is financial inclusion and banking, the other is health tech, and the third is education. And I would just want to spend a few minutes talking about our health tech platform. So we found out uh, in, the, in the North American market that healthcare data interoperability is a big challenge. Once you start visiting and going to multiple providers, uh, getting access to your medical records is, is not that easy. Every doctor is managing their own the medical records basically in their own silos. You go to a doctor, you have to reiterate your medical history, and so on and so forth. And, and in fact, we also learned that there are some cases where actually Pakistan is way far ahead in, in the US. We can send an instant bank transfer in 30 seconds or you get your money back, but you do the same thing in the in US and the transfer takes about three days. I hope that is going to change with Fed now. It's, uh, it's rolled out last year. Uh, two years ago, we rolled out RAS, which was basically our version of Fed now. So um, when, we, when we spoke about uh, healthcare and interoperability, we, we found out that 80% of uh, uh, malpractice incidents take place because the data is not available from one healthcare provider to the other, other healthcare provider during care transition. One out of four Americans actually had to, uh, uh, one, uh, one out of four lab tests is basically a repeat lab test just because the, the information is not shared across the healthcare network. And this is basically when we started building the healthcare information exchange, which we said is going to, be, is going to target the North American market. It is a it is a multifaceted solution. It solves the problem for both the providers as well as the patients. Patients are actually able to uh, use a, a white label mobile application with, with their partners, with our partners, uh, to actually uh, link all uh, link and uh, download all their medical history from uh, different providers. And uh, providers uh, who are part of our network can actually uh, uh, use uh, some demographic information from patients that are social security in your name to confirm. And then they are they're actually able to get a, a complete aggregated uh, uh, record of your entire medical history across multiple labs, multiple hospitals, and we only connect to a small number of uh, sites at the moment. It's uh, it's a little more than sixty-one thousand. Um, and uh, for for this, we actually had to do uh, HIPAA compliance, high trust, SOC two. Uh, we uh, we were the seventh company in the world to attain the payment card industry secure lifecycle uh, certification. First company in Pakistan. And we had some other small companies in the list as well, something like Oracle and Fidelity and uh, Nixdorf and so on and so forth. So, and then we realized, you know, if you're, if you're building something so phenomenal for the North American market, why can't we just use it and implement it in Pakistan? So it's the same way in AMA, if you, if you can solve the problem for 220 million people with the, with the fifth largest population, you can actually solve the problem for half of the world. So now what we're doing is we're actually working together with insurance providers, uh, with, uh, with, with government entities, to actually build a healthcare information exchange in Pakistan. This is going to be a national uh, health record platform that we're trying to build. And uh, we already have uh, a tried, tested, running model out there. But the idea is simple. The common Pakistani is not very literate about what condition they're going through. A common Pakistani does not understand 
what is type 1 and type 2 diabetes. If they go to a provider, the provider basically has to dumb down the condition to them and explain to them what's wrong with you. And you cannot expect these people to be incapacitated walking into an emergency room and, and rehydrating the medical histories. This is not possible. A lot of them don't even carry their medical statements together. So our vision is that with AMA, since we have the, the, the computerized national ID card on which the accounts are open, our, our vision is that on the same national ID card, you can walk into any hospital connected to the MyMediport platform, and the doctor would be immediately able to retrieve your medical record, take an informed decision, and save lives. So we're looking for partners. We're working with partners. We're trying to build this together. Um, uh, we're also currently uh, partnered with, uh, with Amazon to actually do some co-innovation in the Middle East for uh, public sector. So I think uh, the idea is that if we can do it for, for someone else, why don't we can we use it on the home ground? And the third phase is basically education. Um, Mr. Segal has actually said a very uh, um, compelling challenges for us, and education is also one of them. So we're also working in the education sector, uh, trying to build quality education, working with uh, Mr. Uh, Amjad Sakha Saab is also here. We're also trying, uh, we're working uh, with him, collaborating with him on certain projects. So this is basically how uh, we will converge our services together with the Assam mobile account. So you, we will have banking and finance, financial inclusion, a means to an end, you know, giving, giving them an opportunity to change their lives. You know, it is, it is, a, it is basically a means for self-awareness, you know, a, a sense of them themselves, a sense for the community, and then, you know, a, an opportunity to uplift themselves out of the current situation, then access to good healthcare. Whenever we talk about healthcare, we always talk about how many, uh, how many hospitals have been built? How many clinics have been built? How many doctors have gone abroad and come back? But it is also important that, you know, as a technologist, we also need to solve uh, challenges as far as technology is concerned, not just logistics and infrastructure. And I think uh, uh, getting access to this data is very important. And once you have this data, then you can also work on augmented intelligence, you know, um, and we can do really exciting things with it. If somebody has, let's say, type 1 diabetes, we can, to a certain degree, predict. 20 years with a, with a certain medication and certain condition, what are, the, what, are, what, are the, what are the probability of this person actually developing high blood sugar, uh, high, high blood pressure, uh, or someone who's, who's basically going through condition A, uh, doing something else, taking certain medications and do that. So we can also work on clinical trials. We're also uh, rolling out uh, a project in the Middle East where we're actually dis discussing clinical trials and how to digitize this data together, uh, working on data ingestion pipelines with a partnership with Amazon. We're also putting on data lakes uh, uh, for that. And so I think the future looks pretty promising for the Pathfinder Group as far as uh, the, the, the goals that we've set for ourselves are pretty ambitious. But I think we're on the right track with the right trajectory and the right pace. Thank you so much. Um, at this stage, I'd like to open it up for questions if there are any. My name is Sunila Bilal. I have uh, two very quick questions. Uh, pardon my ignorance, but uh, is the state bank um, involved in any of this? And was, did it, if, if so, did it have a facilitative role or uh, was, it, uh, was it more of an obstacle? And the second very quick question is that in the challenge um, that the impact the entire world now faces, has been facing of uh, anti-money laundering and sort of, you know, counter-terror financing and all, what are the uh, safety firewalls, if any, um, for this initiative? Thank you. We are G and the Assam Mobile Accounts Scheme regulated by the State Bank, I think. As Salman said, we're one of the probably the only person, you know, only company that's been regulated both by the state bank and by the Pakistan Telecom Association as well. So we've got both licenses. So the state bank is very much a regulator, or one of our one of our two regulators. Um, you know, as far as you know, obstacle versus I, I don't want to go into details. Obviously, there's been a lot of change in personnel over the years and change of thinking over the years. So I wouldn't call it obstacles. I would call it normal bureaucracy in Pakistan. I think the hurdles that we faced and so forth. But I think the, I think to bring it up to speed today is they're very much supportive of the platform. They very much, you know, promote it. Uh, it's not as we've pointed many times. It's not a government-owned entity. So we're very much a private enterprise. We want to partner up, you know, with you know sort of the public-private sort of partnership. But it's very much from a state bank perspective, uh, they are very supportive of the platform and they're looking for ways we can integrate with. As Salman said, Ross, I'll let you or Ali answer the technical question that was asked. So when we started building the platform, the idea was that um, you will only use your national ID card and you will use a feature phone 
no smartphones, uh, no internet, just USSD technology, and you need to open a bank account. And immediately, what struck us was AML, compliance, frauds, checks, and everything. Because when you hear that you're opening an account in two minutes, compared to the conventional five days, three days, doing the KYC and due diligence, this came to our mind. Luckily, the best thing in Pakistan, which happened from 2014 onwards, is every mobile connection is biometrically uh, authenticated. So you have the Nadra, which was led by uh, Tariq Malik Saab over here, and every mobile connection is mapped on a CNIC number. You can only open um, uh, an Assam mobile account if your mobile connection CNIC is paired with the account with the CNIC number that you're entering. Once that happened, it actually went to the Interior Ministry, and we, we, we uh, with the State Bank, we requested that you know currently we only get KYC information once uh, when we provide a biometric uh, yeah. fingerprint. But then we requested, but this is going to be a remote account opening, and this is going to be flawless uh, without any human intervention uh, in, in the start. It has to be. Uh, can, uh, we would need a, a, a new set of tools to actually retrieve this information, and uh, Nadra worked uh, partnered uh, with State Bank and PT, and then they provided us with the. Uh, uh, provided banks with, with the means to actually uh, retrieve that KYC information. Uh, uh, later on, uh, 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 an added uh, uh, factor of authentication was actually uh, added to the to it. That was basically the date of issue, which is only printed on your card. Uh, so you have to provide your CNIC number, your date of issue, and that is how it, it goes through. And once it goes through, once you press send on your phone, it goes to the national mobile number uh, database where, where, where a pairing check is done. On your CNIC on a mobile connection has to match. Then it goes to the bank. Bank goes to Nadra, retrieves KYC, does the due diligence, comes back, and we make sure it happens in under two minutes. So uh, I hope I'm able to answer your question. State Bank is short. Sure, State Bank is very helpful. Uh, okay. Policy and red tape do take time to actually go through, but very helpful, uh, but very strict as well at the same time as far as info compliances and policy and regulation is concerned. Thanks, sir. I just want to add that this was one of the biggest challenge because KYC compliance, AML compliance, FATF compliance, you know, is done in most of the underdeveloped countries by taking the photocopies and maintaining the files and those record is then stored in some place which, uh, you know, catches fire and then not, nothing is available. So my job was uh, very difficult to digitize that process also. Once we did that di digitization, it has not opened uh, an arena for financial inclusion, but you know, property rights and all that, uh, which would be covered in my presentation. So we have digitized the process of compliance as well. So that, that was one of them. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahim. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I'm Dr. Amjad Saqib. Uh, I have the privilege of representing two uh, largest initiatives. Uh, one is the Social Safety Net, that is the Benazir Income Support Program, and other is a poverty alleviation effort promoting financial inclusion through interest-free loans, Akhobat, which is the largest interest-free program in the world, and we have served more than six million loans in Pakistan. Why I truly appreciate Ahmed Shah for his contribution and VRG and all Pathfinders and Ikram Sahib. Uh, my question is that I'm extremely keen to have a linkage with VRG and BISP. We have started working on it. We have 9.3 million uh, poor women beneficiaries, which will soon be reaching 10 million. So the biggest challenge for us is not the data. Thanks to Tariq Saab, we have a wonderful data, which is you know, endorsed by international agencies. Its transparency is above board. And uh, the biggest issue for us is that when we transfer this money to the poor women, there is a fraud and this you know, embezzlement, which is usually in Pakistan called katoti. <laughs> The vendors, if they, the women receive 9,000 rupees, so they usually get 7,000, 7,500. And if the vendor is too kind, he will give him 8,000 rupees. So now we want to you know, open the bank account, bring all these 
10 billion women into the financial inclusion mold. We certainly appreciate your assistance and your partnership, but please tell us, the whole audience, the different stakeholders, what are the challenges which you envisage to have partnership with this? Because that is extremely important. Why it has not been done so far? I'm just, you know, have been in the best for the last two, two and a half months. But my ultimate objective <clears throat> is to open 9.3 million bank accounts. We don't want to write a new chapter in the history of financial inclusion in Pakistan. So you please tell us what are the challenges which you envisage and how can we all, you know, uh, make an effort to mitigate those challenges. And obviously, uh, Amr Ibrahim's, uh, you know, uh, deliberations on this will also be extremely worthwhile. Thank this you. This time we said that we will transfer the money only in a mobile account. We will not give cash. We don't want to give cash because cash has many issues as highlighted. But there has got to be some forward-leaning mindsets also in your organization and I hope that you continue to spearhead it because now we're beginning to see that ray of hope that we have to do something differently. We cannot keep on resorting to what we've done in the past. So um, very succinctly, what needs to be done is you and I to sit down together. We explain to you why opening a mobile account, whether it's mine, whether it is someone else's, Habib banks, it does not matter, but put the money in a bank account. What we can do additionally is, what does the money get used for? Why is the money cashed out? So Jazz Cash today has 300,000 retail outlets where your QR code through a smartphone or a USSD string can help you purchase groceries from that shop. Eventually, you put money into a mobile account. And at some stage, there is a cash out. In our terminology, we call it a cash out. Cash out is the biggest uh, predictor of failure for us. Why does the cash have to be taken out? Why can't we build the ecosystem? You go around Switzerland over here, you'll struggle to find places where you can actually pay cash because everybody accepts a digital alternative. We as government, and we have people from government over here, we need to make sure that digital is cheaper than cash. Today, it's the other way around. There are greater impediments to onboard digital than there is to cash. So hopefully, once we go back, uh, we have another setting. We can not only provide money into the account, we can always do a limited mandate so that the money that a woman receives, 30% of that only goes to education, 40% of that goes to um, a grocery store, we can actually lock components of that wallet so that that money is not taken away and spent by her husband on cigarettes or something else. So the first step is already being taken because we are, we are already working with at least store corporation and this, this system is, has been tested that let's suppose if, if, the, if, the, if the, uh, the beneficiary gets 8,000 rupees, so out of 8,000 rupees, 4,000 rupees can be only be used at the duty store corporation for the payments of groceries. So the first step is already been done. We are about to go live once we are uh, in the final phases. So this is something which we already have uh, done for the BISP. Thank you, everybody. I'd like to invite Ikram Saigal, chairman of Pathfinder Group, to wrap up. Thank you. Obviously, I'd first like to thank uh, all the participants starting this call. And uh, you cannot imagine the amount of support we've got from the World Economic Forum. And uh, really, uh, we are today because of the encouragement and because of the support received from them. And Lord, uh, acting or whatever, you have been absolutely the part of it. Right from the very beginning. Thank you very much. Um, I would take this opportunity, of course, to say again to Jazz, thank you for being there, Amit. Thank you for being there, Ali Nasir. Because both of you uh, started with Ali and very important to Amit. I think Amir took the strategic decision which is very difficult to make and it hurts your own commercial interests. And I think that was something which was really, really a strategic decision which has changed the destiny of the poor in Pakistan. Just don't think it's a small It was a decision which changed the destiny. You know, we had a slogan in the 70s when, by one of our late prime ministers, Roti Kapra or Makan. Roti, kapra, or makan. We said bread, uh, clothes, and housing. Now, roti, kapra, one can understand where you get housing from if you don't even have a bank account. Right? So there was no cost question. Now, 
low cost housing will be available to those who have Assam mobile accounts and we are already actually working on that and a number of initiatives we are taking. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, for me it's a proud moment and I'd like to thank, uh, uh, you know, my people, Salman and Alisha and all the other people who took part in developing this and the part who su supported this great issue. I just want to tell you that neither I'm a financial expert. When I left the army, I thought LC, letter of credit, was a girl. So that's how much I still know about finance. And I'm not technical by any chance, which, which my son knows because he keeps on, and my daughter in law, they keep on checking me on my uh, techniques. I do this, do that. Right? The point is, we had a vision. And I had the good fortune of being backed up by my family, right? And uh, particularly by my son and uh, the others in the family, Nathar, who actually thought about it right in the beginning. And uh, then the good fortune of employing those people who went with my strategic decision. That's very important. And that was very important. And then, of course, we have gone from strength to strength. Um, uh, Alicia has spoken about Amazon, what we are doing. We are very close uh, to a um, solution there. And uh, again, uh, you know, I'm happy that a uh, representative from Visa is here. And we've uh, partnered with Visa. And Visa is not partnering uh, with us only in Pakistan. We've already uh, entered into a conversation in Egypt because of Visa. And because of Egypt, Morocco, and a number of other countries. So the sky is the limit. And like my son says, now we are open for investment. Because up till now, we have not taken a penny from outside. All the investment has been done by the company in itself. We have not got any, uh, the thing we did look for some money. From them, we found a bureaucrat sitting there who wouldn't give us a time. Right? So we never got any money from them. Right? And we had, uh, uh, we never took a bank loan. So all the money that today we have is our money. And of course, now we need to, we need, we need, we are looking forward to equity and we are going to talk about, but we're not going to uh, go sort of, we're going to sit it out and my son will decide upon whatever uh, route he wants to take. I won't take this opportunity of talking to you directly, Dr. Amisa. You have all the good intentions in the world. The ISP people don't. I'm sorry. They don't. You know, they were, let me tell you, after you said three months have elapsed, that man's on leave, he hasn't come back from home, he's gone somewhere else, he's not available for a meeting. Our people have been going from Karachi to him seven, eight times. They've never met him. The one time they met him, they've said a good word. Sagi sir, Dr. Jahanzeb is here, and I tell you, you're not going to get anywhere. The way you go to a Kuwait, mashallah, it's a, it's a phenomenal thing. But here you are in the hands of bureaucrats, who are in the hands of banks. I was on the board of Bank al -Fala for almost two years. And the money we used to earn, we used to earn from BISP. Because they were having a, a, a rollicking time. Like 10 people used to earn crores of rupees. Right? And let me tell you one thing. The Bain is in support in, for, for plan is to provide food on the table. Is that money going to provide food on the table? It's not. And exactly what Amara said, until you tie that money up with groceries, if you want to provide food on the table, it can only be used to buy groceries. Or else, of course, it is meant for education. That's a separate thing that can be worked out. But that particular thing, and that is why we are working with the Security Stores Corporation and uh, the, uh, the GMIT, who's done marvelous work for the four and a half thousand stores of Security Stores Corporation. So we are working with them. We are already integrated with them, uh, that thing, etc. And with the result that if the money goes into the AMA account and the person goes to a utility stores, he can only spend it on groceries. Which is meant for. So first of all, the government of Pakistan has to decide whether it's meant for the drinks of 
the, the wife's husband or the son or whether it went for uh, the groceries on the table. That is what I want. And, and I wish you because this is going to be hard road to do. But I would also like to say that we've already with Cloud, we've already integrated financial inclusion, we are integrating health, and we should integrate education into that one platform, which is your dream, Web's dream, Edison Lions dream. Please, I want to thank all of you again. I want to talk to members who are sitting here of the Member of Commerce, uh, the president on his telephone, but he's, but he's here. And um, I want to thank other members. I want to thank my family, especially. They've already been supported. And I want to thank all my staff, the people who actually put up this stand in the morning, the people who actually do the printouts, were like you know my secretary, and my others, all of them in their own way. The people who are now serving the uh, you know, which we are making here, which is special to Pakistan. Right? And so before you leave, uh, please do have a little bit of whatever you can get. Thank you very much.